Integrating car and smartphone has become a crucial aspect for modern cars. Many tech companies have been talking about making cars for over a decade. But there has been much visible success. Samsung failed and was acquired by Renault. Apple's project Titan has yet to show any signs of progression. Sony seems to have forgotten about its collaboration with Honda and Huawei, involved in every aspect of EV production except manufacturing. But now, there's finally a car that literally being made by a smartphone company. This is the Xiaomi Su7, a pure electric car that looks a lot like the Porsche Taycan. And yes, it was built from scratch by the very Xiaomi you are thinking of. I thought a car from a tech giant would be very unconventional and revolutionary, but surprisingly, the Su7 is quite practical, even a bit traditional eyesight. So in this video, I'll show you guys what this smart electric vehicle really offers. I'm Harris. You're watching my AV. Let's first start with the vehicle part. Even though it's only been around a thousand days since Xiaomi CEO Lei Jun announced they're making cars, it's clear that he understands the basics. In their team, we can spot many designers and engineers from traditional car companies, and they even brought in the famous Chris Bangle as a design consultant. During the technology launch, Lei Jun also made it clear that this is going to be a driver's car. And the result is, even though the Su7 has the lowest drag coefficient among mass-produced cars, you can still spot many traditional designs. It has a low stance, a long L113 like you found in gas cars, diffusers that seem ready for a quad exhaust setup, a classic performance car steering wheel, and a bunch of physical buttons that looks very useful. What's more, there's even a start button. I get the other designs, all for aesthetics and convenience, but the stop button seems a bit unnecessary to me. They say it's Lei Jun's personal preference, preserving some kind of routine. When it comes to chassis fundamentals, Xiaomi has also put in significant effort. Besides a common setup in Chinese EVs, air suspension, CDC, front double wishbone, and rear five link, Xiaomi gave it a real monocle that enhances body rigidity, space utilization, and simplifies the manufacturing process. To meet their own tech standard, Xiaomi even developed a massive 9,100 ton decasting equipment and a decasting alloy by itself. Additionally, for better repair affordability, they've incorporated both low speed crumble zone and mid high speed crumble zone. Here's something interesting. In Xiaomi's car making team, there's the former head of Geely's Research Institute. So, Xiaomi's Modena architecture shares some similarity with Zeker's SEA platform, including some electric parts. 800 watt architecture, 100 kilowatt hour battery, 673 horsepower, not 100 in 2.78 seconds. These are not that mind blowing for EVs these days, but what this Su7 has are not just these impressive specs, it has a lot more. Firstly, the hyper engine, a super motor with 299 slash 374 horsepower, 400 slash 500 newton meter of torque. While this might seem ordinary, the real kicker is a whopping 21,000 RPM, pushing the top speed of Su7 to 265 kph, which is very close to what a performance petrol car can do. And there's even a more powerful version on board in 2025, with maximum 578 horsepower and 635 newton meter of torque, exceeding 27,000 RPM. To make it easier for comparing them with traditional engines, these three motors were named V6, V6S, and VAS. And according to them, there's also another one with carbon sleeve rotor reaching 35,000 RPM in the lab. Next is a new CTB architecture. Unlike the BYDs, this one's cover is also the cabin's floor, with seats directly mounted on top. Together with some highly integrated designs of CTL's battery like streamlined wiring, inverted battery cells, and a side cooling system, Xiaomi managed to slim down the entire floor for a precious 17mm. And this is a big reason why the Su7 can be this low. But I can't help but wonder, what if the battery has a thermal runaway and the bottom plate gets damaged? Could the inverted cell turn the car into a rocket? Regarding the smart part, Raging didn't spell too many beans during the launch. On the ADAS, this car has two Orion X chip, 27 perception hardware including a LiDAR, and a BEV plus transformer model plus occupancy network. This is pretty much the standard of Chinese new EVs. 
As for the smart cabin, it has a Snapdragon 8295 chip, a 60.1 inch 3K central display, and Xiaomi's latest Hyper OS. Whether it's the hardware capability and software functionality, it's comparable with those who also has smartphone business, like Huawei, Geely, and Neo. But this doesn't mean Xiaomi will stop here. After all, there's a lot more info about this car that is still unreleased. As an SEV from smartphone giant, its intelligence is definitely something to look forward to. And in the information that's already out there, we've already seen something that only Xiaomi could pull off. Firstly, near the central display, the Su7 has four slots to attach physical buttons or other hardware. In this day and age, I have to give a big thumb up to Leidrin for not making the car Tesla-like. Secondly, to everybody's surprise, Xiaomi even made the car compatible with Apple devices. Not only does it have Apple CarPlay, it even allows iPad to do what was meant for Xiaomi's tablet, serving as an interface for the back. Lastly, what Xiaomi does best is the smart home. Once the car syncs with a Xiaomi account, the owner can check and control the vehicle through the Mi Home app. Plus, any Mi Home compatible accessory can be seamlessly used in the car. As a long-time user of Xiaomi's smartphone products, I'm already eager to see what its first family SUV can offer. Now, you probably found that this C7 is very practical, just like Leidre himself. Not only it has all the high-tech you find in a product made by a tech giant, but also a good amount of technical strength on the fundamentals of a car. Although it is not as out of the box or radical, one might even say it won't be versatile so bad that end up with some compromises. However, my thought is that for a phone maker that often gets criticized on the internet, there's no room for failure this time. This is a debut for Xiaomi, but it's also a decisive final. All this got me thinking. We will grow increasingly tired of Apple's confidence and their sense of assurance with each year's mundane update. So can Xiaomi's new car make Apple speed up its car making process?